Hi, I'm Matthew with Gorgistic here to tell you a little bit about the Gorgistic E30 roll bars. We're gonna talk about the differences between a roll bar and a roll cage, some of the options that we offer, and we're gonna talk about a little bit about installation tips. So the main difference between a roll bar and a roll cage is that the cage ties past the driver and in multiple points and offers side protection, where a roll bar is behind you and bolts up into the car. So this would be a considered a roll bar. So when looking to purchase a Gorgistic E30 roll bar, you're gonna see on the website that there's a couple of different options. The main option difference being the diagonal X like shown in this car or a bent rear legs. The two reasons you would want one or the other is that if you wanted to run a rear seat in the back of this thing to cover the paneling, you wouldn't be able to run the X's like this one. You'd have to run a bent rear harness. However, the X does offer rigidity and support for those rear legs in the case of a rollover. The X being by far our most popular option. The next distinguishing option on you'll see on the website will be the actual harness bar. So in this particular car, there's a bent harness. Bent harness is more suitable for drivers over six feet tall that need a little bit more room where, you know, someone about my height, about five, nine, under six foot, something like that, would have a straight harness bar and would be perfectly fine. With the modern racing seats, the backing tends to be a lot smaller than the factory. So on some cases, a straight harness bar is just fine. But if you're concerned about how far you can move the seat back, it's definitely worth getting the bent harness bar because it's one of those things you can't add later. Our roll bars are made out of inch and three quarter material, which is actually meant for a weight class above the E30. So that's just how safe these things are. And they're very tight fitting. They don't actually allow the car to accelerate the actual paneling and body to crumble in the case of an accident. That's why you don't want roll bars and roll cages like some competitors where there's big, big gaps. When the car starts crumbling, it actually has so much room to accelerate that it can still cause damage to the driver and to the cage and the car. So a tight fitting roll bar is always what you want. Another feature that adds to their Gargistic E30 roll bar safety is that the landings, the actual feet that land on the front actually land on the frame. Unlike other competitor roll bars where they actually kind of kink in and land on the floor pans, those actually don't do anything. So in the case of a rollover, actually it would actually puncture through the floor and take out the fuel line on the driver's side on an E30. So one of our distinguishing points is moving it as far out as possible to actually land on the E30 frames. And in case there was any other doubts that these roll bars are, are not gonna add any safety to your car, we also have backing plates that go on the very bottom of these and the feet. These are eighth inch thick steel. So these are not gonna allow that roll bar to puncture through the chassis of the car. It would have to go through the frame and through two eighth inch pieces of steel. So it's definitely peace of mind for anybody who wants to dual purpose their car, use it on the street and then take it to any track, drift event or anything like that. All of our roll bars are also customizable colors. We can do most colors free of charge, reds, yellows, oranges, you know, if you want like a unicorn pink, I'm, as long as you give us a code, we could probably do it. Unicorn pink. It might be a real color. Yeah. <laughs> now that you've selected the right roll bar, we're gonna get into the actual installation process and the tools necessary to get it done. The Gergistic E30 roll bar comes with backing plates and necessary hardware. The required tool list is center drill bits, Phillips screwdriver, 17 millimeter socket, stepper drill, three eighths drill, and a 12 millimeter drill. Optional equipment would be a center punch and deburr tool. It will also help if you have a friend to help you with installation. The first thing you're gonna have to do is take out your front and rear seats. You will also have to take out your front seat belt bracket. Now would be a good time to bribe a buddy with a beer so you don't have to mess up your interior by yourself. The center console can stay during this process, but removing it might make it a little bit easier. Once you have one of the roll bar legs over the center console, you can then slide it back into position, resting the rear legs on top of the wheel wells. After that, you can jack up the rear of the car. And safely put it on jack stands on the rear subframe. You're gonna have to remove the rear wheels to be able to drill the pilot holes for the back of the car. Using a marker, you could then mark the lower plates on where you will end up being drilling into the chassis. If you have a center punch, now would be a good time to use it so you don't have your drill bit end up walking. Be sure to lower the fuel lines on the driver's side. There's a Phillips screwdriver holding the bracket.
and then use a screwdriver just like we did to keep the lines down. Lowering a few lines will ensure that you don't end up drilling through them. Then with the car jacked up safely and your safety glasses on, go ahead and drill the first pilot hole. Then switch to the 12 millimeter drill bit. Using a file or deburr tool, you can then end up actually taking off all the sharp edges and go ahead and not rub your finger on the holes just like we are doing here. With a little bit of paint, you'll be able to keep the new holes that you just put in your car from rusting. You could then put all four of the lower plates below the car and tighten them down. We recommend putting the bolt long side into the cabin. This will keep anything from protruding and touching the tire. Don't forget to put your seat belt brackets back on once the car is lowered and tighten it down. If you got the bent rear legs option on your roll bar, you'd be able to put in the rear seat back in just to cover the paneling. Again, we don't really recommend anybody should be sitting back there. That's it, that's all it takes. You can now have the confidence to take it to the track, add rigidity to your car, and be safe at the same time. Thanks for watching guys. If there's anything else you guys would like to do instructions for, be sure to subscribe and comment below and we'll be sure to look into it for you.